subscribe to the Light Sports and Ultra Flyer web video magazine with hundreds and hundreds of videos now online, including air show coverage, Rotax engine tech tips, Rotax 377, 447, 503, 532, and 582 engine rebuilding videos, each two hours in length. Propeller maintenance, advisors, and repairs, Vieras parachute saves, Bing carb updates, and much, much more. Get a yearly subscription at www.ultralightflyer.com. Chris, you and I did an interview uh, several years ago. You were uh, in the business. We had uh, a couple of little airplanes for this display. I guess that was it, what, Oshkosh? Uh, yeah, Oshkosh was fun and fun. And I see that you've changed a little bit now. You're actually building and manufacturing an airplane. Yeah, we're, we're building a, a Super Cub clone called the Bush Cub. Um, we're going to have an LSA base uh, weight on one, and we have a kit that's anywhere from 1320 LSA weight all the way up to a 2,000 pound gross weight. So you're really uh, fitting that whole niche market then? That's right, yeah. We, we tried a lot of different avenues. Um, I owned a Cub before, and I always liked the Cub, and saw that the Cub was gaining a lot of attention and decided we'd take that route. I also purchased a company that was manufacturing Cub components. So it was a natural progression to go into the manufacturing of the airframes and hopefully the complete aircraft. Now that was a couple of years ago uh, that you purchased the, the company then? Right, it was about 2005 I think it was. And what type of components were they making for the Cub at that time? Uh, they were making landing gear fittings, wing fittings, um, basically all the weld-on components to a Super Cub airframe. So it wouldn't be much of a, a step then going from that to up into the, the total airplane? No, no, just a couple hundred feet of welded tubing. That's the, that's the difference. What are some of the bases of the airplane? Like you're using what, 4130 chromoly steel tubing on it? It's, uh, the airframe is completely 4130 chromoly. Um, we're also integrating a lot of carbon fiber components um, and other plastic composites um, that Piper didn't have the advantage of using in the 30s and 40s. So we're hoping to save some weight, um, increase the strength a little bit, and make a better airplane with it. Now, is there any of the uh, design modifications that you're making into, say, the airframe or anything like that? Uh, what, uh, we've, got, we've gone to a four-inch wider fuselage, which is, is pretty much a standard now. Um, I still sell fuselages, and every one of them that comes through is a request for four-inch wider. Um, the stock Cub Super Cub fuselage was a little narrow. Um, other than that, it, it, it remains true to the the Cub Super Cub lineage. Okay. So you're going to have a float uh, set up for it and that type of thing. Yep. Uh, our our second plane that we'll build will be a, a full-blown experimental 2,000 pound and then it'll have float attachments and eventually be on amphibious floats. Now we're uh, getting our front and back seating on this, you're going to have dual controls both front and back? Correct, it'll be set up just like a, a Cub, full, full controls front and rear. Now let's say someone were to, uh, to purchase a kit, what kind of building time and what kind of uh, area would they need in order to finish the kit that you supply? Uh, we figure a building time between 12 and 1500 hours. Um, it's basically you get a, a completely welded and painted airframe. There's no there's no metal work to do other than some fitting of panels. Um, the bulk of your time is spent covering and, and bolting the airplane together. It's really an, an assembly type process other than the covering. Now, uh, the wing on it, is it the standard type of wing that the Cub used uh, back uh, 30, 40 years ago? It's traditional design. Um, we use all aluminum ribs. The ribs we're using are a PMA type rib. Um, with an intercostal brace, um, very light, very strong. Um, we're using carbon fiber leading edges, which we've been able to eliminate the nose ribs and save a couple pounds. Um, we're using a carbon fiber wing tip, um, which rounds it out, um, and the all aluminum base. It makes makes for a very sturdy, um, lightweight wing. Now, what about the control systems? Are you using a, a push rod style? Are you using the cables? We're go we're going to use cables. Uh, again, it's a weight savings measure. Um, we looked at a push rod system and it would be slightly heavier. Uh, every ounce I can save is an ounce that I can can lower my, my empty weight with and, and give somebody a little more gross weight. Okay. So what are we going to be powering it with that? The new Lycoming 0233 is uh, going to be the power for our LSA model. Um, we've got one of the first on order. Um, we should have delivery of that sometime in late November, early December. And uh, after that, it's going to be a flurry to assemble it and get it ready to fly. So you're looking at having something flying first next year then? I would like to have something flying uh, by Sebring of next year, which is the end of January. Now are you going through the full LSA certification or are you going the experimental route? How are you going to be offering here? This prototype will be built under experimental rules. 
Um, once we get it established, we'll go for ASTM certification and, and go light sport on all the following subsequent models. Now, I've known you for a number of years now. I know you're a small manufacturer. What type of uh, production capabilities are you going to have once you've got this finalized and uh, they start they're rolling out the door? Well, depends on how the orders come in. I can produce a, a dozen a year. That'll make me very happy. I'm not looking to be a, the biggest manufacturer. I want to build every plane. I want to be a so quality they airplane. To get in touch with you to uh, talk to you about your kit, that type of thing. What was the easiest way to do it? They can contact us through our website at bushwhackerair.com and. Uh, I'll be happy to reply then. We also uh, answer the phone any time of day, 518-796-0732. And where are you physically located? We're physically located in uh, northeastern New York, right at the foothills of the Adirondacks, Lake George, New York. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.